Coastal sagegrub is a dry habitat of low-growing shrubs and flora, but the native species have adapted to absorb the maximum amount of water during the occasional periods of rainfall. The flora space themselves out in order to give enough room for each other to absorb water. They are drought deciduous, meaning that they lose their leaves during the dry season in order to conserve water. During this time, they may appear very dry and could easily be mistaken for dead. However, they spring back to life after it rains. This strategy is successful, but invasive species and human impact pose further challenges to these adapted organisms. The habitat of coastal sage scrub in the San Diego River is under assault by non-native invasive flora, which are outproducing the native plants when the water is plentiful. Species such as ice plant and salt grass have been brought into the habitat by humans and have the potential to wipe out the habitat because they are more efficient at reproducing quickly. Under drought conditions, the native plants can ward off the invading species, but when the rains come, the invasives have the advantage. With their abilities to absorb water and spread quickly, they end up dominating vast regions of this habitat. The natives utilize their ability to dry themselves out and live through hard times in order to reclaim territory. This battle rages on in the coastal sage scrub habitat. Humans have affected this habitat as well, building on the habitat in response to urbanization. Much of what is left has been damaged by careless actions. Organizations such as the San Diego River Foundation have made a pathway, as many visitors of the river would walk in the plants and kill them, destroying much of the habitat and preventing recovery. In addition, they organize volunteers to remove much of the invasive species in the habitat, and they have worked to preserve the native flora that are at risk. These organizations fight to bring the scrub back into the river and restore it. While difficult, invasive species are able to be controlled through chemical and mechanical means. These plants can be removed with chemical herbicides. Although this may be extremely effective in removing the plant, it has the potential to cause unintended damage to nearby native plants. It also costs money to buy the herbicides and can be expensive when trying to remove large amounts of an invasive species. Taking out plants mechanically or by hand is very precise as there isn't much collateral damage to nearby native plants. However, this process can be sometimes ineffective if the plant is germinating seeds and may drop them while being pulled. This makes non-native invading flora very difficult to eradicate. Continuing efforts to save this vital habitat, along with the native plants' own strategies, help ensure that biodiversity will be maintained and species saved.